Uh, thank you very much. My name is Yogesh Kyanchanani. I'm from the University of Michigan, and I had no contribution to this paper at all. Uh, unfortunately, Professor Michael Schur uh, uh, had, an health, had a health issue, and uh, last week uh, he requested me to give this uh, a presentation uh, for him. So I'm going to try to go through it uh, best as I can here. Uh, basically, um, as uh, the preceding speaker uh, pointed out, uh, there's, um, um, there is uh, uh, an important need for uh, uh, gas sensors and various other kinds of sensors that are made from graphene. Uh, chemical and biological uh, sensors have many uh, key applications uh, in medicine, homeland security, um, and other applications. Uh, Uh, but uh, uh, there's uh, obviously a need for uh, better sensors. Um, the existing sensors are not necessarily as selective and are not as uh, useful in complex mixtures and so on. So there's a need to develop uh, these graphene sensors. And quite a bit of work has been done in this area. For the sensors that were made in uh, this research effort, these were uh, research grade uh, transistors produced by mechanical exfoliation of graphene samples. And then the high quality of the samples was established by Raman spectro uh, spectroscopy. Um, and uh, two kinds of uh, transistors were made. You can see here that the graphene is laid down on 300 nanometers of silicon dioxide that is thermally grown. Uh, the bottom gate transistors used uh, very highly doped silicon as the gate material, and the top gate transistors um, used um, uh, the metal uh, gate. Uh, there was a, up the upper gate insulator was deposited by physical vapor deposition, and it was not a, as good. You can see it's hafnium oxide in this case, and other oxides were also deposited. Um, and uh, so here are the characteristics uh, for the bottom gate uh, transistors. Samples A, B, and C are all bottom gate transistors. Uh, this sample is a top gate transistor, and the drain current swing is much lower. As you can see, if this is superimposed there, uh, it's not very good. So all the subsequent work was done with uh, bottom gate transistors. Uh, the mobility of uh, uh, the... Um, uh, carriers was extracted by a couple of different techniques, uh, including a transconduction, transconductance uh, technique and uh, a drain current uh, technique. Uh, but uh, the four-point measurement method was used to uh, account for the contact resistance. Now, it turns out that the mo mobility calculations uh, uh, or extraction uh, matched, uh, you know, the, the values matched by whatever technique was used. And uh, the range was uh, from 3,000 to about 1,300 centimeters square per volt second. Now, if you look at the noise characteristics, and, uh, this is, um, uh, as you saw in the preceding speaker's uh, slides here, this is a uh, uh, noise uh, spectral uh, intensity versus frequency over here. Um, you can see that uh, uh, the Hooge parameter was... Uh, uh, 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 2, uh, and uh, that's on the high side. Maybe the very best transistors can be used for RF applications. Um, the other point to note here is as the gate voltage is swung from, say, minus 60 to plus 60, there's not a lot of variation in the noise uh, characteristics. And this is unlike the situation in conventional transistors which suggests that the noise is not related to the fluctuation of carrier numbers, but is instead related to the fluctuation of mobility. Uh, in any event, if the, uh, if the noise behavior of the graphene transistors is compared to that of uh, carbon nanotubes, it, turns, uh, it looks like the graphene is really quite a bit better. Um, but uh, the uh, graphene... Um, uh, noise does not follow the McWhorter model, uh, where um, if you had a um, uh, regular MOS transistor, uh, you would expect this kind of variation, 
uh, with uh, um, uh, gate voltage um, in the noise parameter, but uh, uh, for uh, for um, uh, graphene it does not uh, vary with gate voltage. Okay, so how does the resistance change um, in the presence of uh, humidity? Uh, and um, we see that from this plot that uh, in the with exposure to humidity the resistance starts rising and takes quite a while. It saturates uh, in about 500 seconds over here. Uh, this is exposure to ethanol, same sort of uh, response, you know, kind of a slow response here. Uh, and then here you can see that uh, with UV light you can sort of clean the sample. <coughs> now, uh, the resistance change in um, uh, with the exposure to various gases is uh, a useful uh, parameter, but not adequate because it's not uh, specific. It's also kind of slow. Uh, so, this team looked a little bit more carefully at uh, the noise behavior. Uh, if you look at the noise spectral density versus frequency over here, um, for, for different gases, well, you do see some shift, um, particularly at the low frequency end, and you see these bulges over here starting to uh, emerge, and the bulges are different for uh, the different uh, gases not enough from this plot to be able to distinguish too clearly, but they are reproducible. Now, if you change what you are plotting, so you have uh, uh, the noise multiplied by the frequency versus the frequency, then the distinction between these uh, characteristics for different gases becomes very much clearer. Um, so, if you combine the delta R over R that you saw in the preceding plots with this um, characteristic frequency uh, where the you know where it bulges over here, that already gives you more specific information about the gases. But you can also introduce another parameter, which is the gamma parameter over here, which is essentially the width of a bulge divided by the center uh, um, of that bulge. Um, you get uh, uh, quite a lot of specificity. Uh, by the way, for different transistors, uh, the, the profile of the bulge and the FC of the bulge doesn't change very much, even when the noise uh, changes in absolute terms. So, if you look at these three parameters, the gamma parameter, the fractional change in resistance, and the frequency at which this bulge occurs, you can get quite a lot of distinction between these uh, different gases over here. Uh, in fact, you don't even really need uh, the entire delta R over R. Uh, Professor Schur feels that just the, the, the sign, the positive or the negative, which emerges very early, you don't have to wait 500 seconds or 50 seconds, just the sign of this and then uh, the noise parameters can be uh, used to uh, distinguish between the gases. Now, let us talk a little bit about uh, the current and voltage characteristics at elevated temperatures. Um, uh, at, uh, this, is, this is the characteristic at uh, something close to room temperature and uh, you see that there is a little bit of hysteresis here in the IV curve depending on which direction you are going. As you raise the temperature, you get a little bit more hysteresis and that goes up yet more as you elevate to uh, 533 Kelvin over here. Uh, so, that is something that uh, the team is going to be looking at exploiting in the future, but there is another parameter also uh, that seems to be even more interesting and this is uh, uh, hysteresis. Now, depending on the sweep rate, you get a hysteresis, uh, I mean sorry, you get a sort of a step change a memory effect at close to zero gate voltage. Uh, uh, you can see that if the sweep rate is slow, this is quite a pronounced change. If the sweep rate is fast, you don't see it as clearly. And this is done at more than 500 K. Uh, and uh, this, they believe, is a memory effect that can be used to enhance the sensitivity uh, to gases, uh, you know, if it's if it's used in the right way. So they're going to be looking at that in the future. And um, I'm going to skip the slide because this basically covers the same information. 
to conclude, uh, vapors of uh, different chemicals change the noise spectra differently by introducing bulges with different FC. Uh, the FC of the vapor induced bulge in addition to the delta R over R and the new parameter gamma which is unfortunately having some uh, issues here um, can, uh, can allow you to uh, separate between these different vapor, uh, vapors. And then uh, the, the memory step that is uh, observed at high at elevated temperatures can uh, perhaps uh, lead to more sensitivity in uh, certain conditions. So, I will stop there.